Hey everybody, uh, this is Slope and Parallel Lines, so module 2.1. Um, this is an integrated math 3 lesson. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathlog.com. So, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So, let's go ahead and get started here. So, our question here is how, how can we use slope to solve problems that involve parallel lines? Okay, so slope and parallel lines. Here's some ways to find slopes of a line. Okay, so if they give you a picture, I think this is the easiest way, then your slope is rise over run. So just make sure you go from left to right when you do rise over run. If they give you two points, then you can either do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or y1 minus y2 over x2 minus x1. Just remember the x's go on bottom. And I it's a it's a dumb gimmick, but this is how I remember. An X has two legs. You see those two legs with an X? The Y only has one leg. The X with two legs will hold up the fraction better than the Y. The Y will fall down. That's why the X goes on bottom. It'll hold it up better. Whatever. Whatever works, okay? I love dumb gimmicks that help me remember. So if they give you the equation, and um, this is called slope-intercept form, Y equals MX plus B, then the number in front of x is your slope. If they give it to you in standard form, ax plus by equals c. Sometimes they'll put the y part first and the x part second, but equals a number. Then your slope is always opposite the number that's in front of x over the number in front of y. Okay? Easy way. Okay? And if uh, y equals a number without any x's, then your slope is zero. And if x equals a number without any y's, then it's a vertical line. Um, this is a horizontal line right here. And this is a vertical line. And some, some books say slope is undefined. Some books say, say no slope. Um, just depends on your book right there. Okay? And I, I forgot what our book does. I've been teaching for th 30 years. <laughs> I forget. Anyway, so uh, two lines are parallel, and parallel is written uh, with these um, uh, lines next to each other. If and only if they have the same slope are, and are in the same plane. Okay? So show that uh, this is a trapezoid. So what we need to do is show that um, uh, this, this piece is parallel to this piece. Okay? It's pretty clear that this piece is not parallel to this piece. So, so let's go ahead and um, uh, use the slope formula with the top and bottom. So the slope of AB, so we're going to do, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to do uh, uh, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Just remember 2 minus a minus 1 is 2 plus 1. So 3 minus uh, 1 is 2 and and 2 plus 1 is 3 so we get 2 thirds over here we get uh, uh, 1 minus a minus 3 is 1 plus 3 is 4 and then 3 minus a minus 3 is 3 plus 3 is 6 okay so we get 4 6 which uh, gives us 2 thirds so since the slopes are the same then it has to be a trapezoid. Remember, a trapezoid is only one pair of parallel sides. If it has two pairs of parallel sides then it's a parallelogram, okay? Trapezoids cannot be parallelograms and, and vice versa. Okay, show that this is a parallelogram, okay? So again, the vertices are right there. So if we go ahead and do slope formula and we crank that out, we find out that um, uh, this slope and this slope, which is this guy and this guy, are equal. And uh, this slope and this slope are equal, so it has to be both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, are parallel, so it has to be a parallelogram. Now, it would have been easier just to use rise over run. Check this out. From the, you always got to start from the left, so this goes down one, two, three, four, over two. So down four over two is negative two. Okay, this from from left to right. If we go down two over 4, negative 2 over 4 is negative 1 half. So either way, just show that they're both um, uh, equal slopes, the opposite sides. Okay, find the coordinates of the missing vertex in each parallelogram. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph these points right here. Okay, so they give us some points and we're going to graph. All right, now I know um, uh, A, B, C is going to be floating right over here. A, B, C. So there's a couple ways to do it. I think I, I went from A to D. So from A to D it went up 1 over 4. 
So we got to do the same. Go up one over one, two, three, four. So there's C right there, okay? So if we do that, that'll give us that point. And just check, you guys. We can check from B to A. From B to A it goes down five over three. So just make sure that this point goes down five over three. And we're good, okay? So the coordinates of vertex C are at two comma four. Do the same thing, okay? So let's graph those guys. All right, so D, E, F, G. So D is going to float over here somewhere. So depends on where you started. So from F to G, okay? So I go down 3 to the left 1. So we got to go down 3 to the left 1 right there. So, so if we do that and then just check it. So um, uh, from uh, E to F, it goes down 1 to the right 6. So just make sure we go down 1 to the right 6 on that guy, okay? All right, so the coordinates of point D are at negative 3, negative 1, okay? All right, so explain whether these lines uh, would form a trapezoid, a parallelogram, or neither, okay? And remember, parallelograms can never be trapezoids. Okay, so they give us some equations here. Let's, let's uh, get this a little bit bigger here. So they give us these equations right here. So here I'm going to go minus 3x minus 3x and get it into y equals mx plus b. Minus 3 minus 3, we get y equals negative 3, so the slope of this guy is 0. The slope of this guy is 3, the slope of this guy is is also 3. So, so let's go ahead and find the slopes, and since the slopes of, um, of m and p are equal, they both equal 3 right there, it has to be a trapezoid because the other ones are not equal right there. Okay, does that make sense? All right, if you are sitting in my class, I'm going to give you this assignment right up here. Okay, and here's the answer. So pause it, and then here's some more answers right there. The answers to the odds. All right, you guys, take care.